Welcome to this lesson on solving by completing the square. This method is useful when a equals 1 and when the trinomial cannot be factored. All right, so our first step is to move the constant to the other side of the equal sign. So the constant is our C, which in this case is 8. So I'm going to move it over. And it's going to become negative 8. I subtracted it to the other side. Then we are going to divide B, which is 6, by 2 and square it. Or B over 2 squared. So that gives me 3 squared, which is 9. Alright, number 3, we're going to add that to both sides of our equation from number 2. So we're going to take that number from number 2, which is 9, and we're going to add it to the left and the right side of the equation. Alright, step four is we're going to factor the left side, and it should be a perfect square trinomial because we have completed the square. That's why it's called completing the square. So let's just prove it. So I'm just looking at this expression right here. So we're looking for factors of nine that are going to add to give me six, and that would be three and three. So it should always factor into a binomial squared. All right, let's go ahead and add those numbers from the right side. Negative 8 plus 1, that's 1. So I can write this as a binomial squared. And then step 5 is to solve by taking the square roots. So let me get a different color here. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Plus or minus 1. And then I'm going to make two equations. Oops. Alright, so minus 3 minus 3x equals negative 2. And x equals negative 4. Okay, so let's try that again. So step one, I'm going to move that 24 to the other side. I'm going to add it to the other side. And then I'm going to take my B, which is 2, half it, and square it. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. So I'm going to add that to both sides of my equation. And then I'm going to factor. All right, so factors of 1, that'll add to give me 2. Well, the only factors of 1 are 1. I'm going to go ahead and add on my right side, 24 plus 1 is 25. I can rewrite this as a binomial squared. And then I can solve by taking square roots. All right, so plus or minus 5. I'm going to write that as two equations. So that's going to be minus five or minus one minus one. That's four. Minus one minus one. That's negative six. All right, number two. Move that twenty-five to the other side. Take B, half it, and square it. If you want to keep the negative, you can. It doesn't matter. It's always going to be positive because we're squaring it. So either way. So that's 64. So 
add 64 to both sides of the equation. All right, so let's see. I know it's x and x. I'm looking for factors of 64 that will add or subtract to give me negative 16. And it's always going to be the same number in both parentheses. So it looks like it's going to be 8 and h, but it needs to be negative 8 and negative 8 to give me that positive 64 and the negative 16. All right, and then on the left-hand side, a negative 25 plus 64, that's 39. All right, and then I'm going to take square roots. Let's see, 39, that's not a perfect square, so I'm just going to leave it the square root of 39. Don't forget your plus or minus. And then add 8. So my final answer would be 8 plus or minus the square root of 39. Don't try to add those together. They are not like terms. 8 is not a radical expression. So we can just write them side by side as an expression together. Okay, number 3, step 1 is already done for us. So our C is already moved. Let's take our B and half it and square it. going to be 16. So I'm going to add that to both sides. Alright, so let's see. Looks like this is going to have to be negative 4 and negative 4. And if you've noticed, the number that goes in the two binomials, it's always half of your b. That's half of your b. Half of b. It does always work out that way. All right, and then negative 8 plus 16, that's 8. So I'm going to write this as a binomial squared. And then I'm going to solve by taking square roots. Okay, 8 is not a perfect square. It can be simplified, though. square root of 4 times the square root of 2, so 8 is really 2 on the square root of 2. Don't forget your plus or minus. And then I'm going to add 4. Do not try to add those together. They are not like terms because 4 is not a radical expression. It doesn't have a radical. So I can just write it as 4 plus or minus 2 square root of 2. And that is the standard way to write it with the number first and then the radical part. All right, and then number four, this actually has a GCF, so always look for GCFs first and factor those out. It's just going to make it a little bit easier for you. So I can divide all of these by two, so I'm going to factor a two out. And then I'm going to use that to complete the square. So you really don't need that two part anymore. You can just rewrite it. And I'm going to move that 3 to the other side. All right, so let's see. Half of 12 squared, that would be 36. Let's just skip that step where we have to write it twice, right? It's always going to be a binomial squared. And if you've been paying attention, it's always half of your B. And always make sure, so 6 times 6 is 36, 6 plus 6 is 12, so that is correct. Negative 3 plus 36, that's 33. And then let's solve by taking square roots. All right, square root of 33, that's not a perfect square. It's not going to simplify to anything. There are no perfect squares that will divide evenly into 33, so I'm just going to leave it. Plus or minus the square root of 33. Let's subtract 6. Don't combine those, just write them side by side. Okay, you can go ahead and stop the video and complete your practice.